advice. Today we're going to be talking about physical activity and the skeletal system. So why do the NHS guidelines recommend doing muscle strengthening activity twice a week? Well, muscle strengthening activity has a number of health benefits which we'll try and cover today in this video. Well, what is muscle strengthening activity? Basically it's anything that involves improving the strength of your muscles. For some people it might be something like lifting weights, for other people it might simply be walking up a high flight of stairs for example. Anything that makes your muscles have to work to move a resistance. Uh, there's many different forms of exercise and sports which fall under the muscle strengthening spectrum. Uh, for example, resistance training, weight training, bodybuilding, uh, some forms of Pilates, yoga, among other things. Uh, it's easier to understand when you consider that muscle strengthening activity is usually any activity where you're working against a resistance or a moder moderate to heavy load to move something. It can also be your own body weight. So what effects does muscle strengthening activity have on the skeletal system or the bones? Uh, well, it's important to realise that during muscle strengthening activity, the bones and the muscles work together, as we've said before, to move objects, be it a weight, your own body weight, etc., from A to B. Okay, for example, take the biceps muscle, which is here on the arm, uh, which attaches on the scapulae up here and then inserts down on the lower arm bones, the radius down here. So I've got a diagram here of this. This is the biceps muscle, this red thing here. Uh, this is the outside of the arm here, and this is the humerus bone, which is the bone in the upper part of your arm, so that appears the scapula. And as you can see, the tendons attach the muscle into the bone, down here and down here. If you could imagine that this, this arm is holding a weight and it's moving the weight like this, the biceps muscle is contracting, so the biceps muscle is providing the power to move the object while the bones are providing the structural support to the muscle so that it can apply that power through. Uh, and what happens is, as the arm contracts, so imagine the bottom part of this arm, if the weight moves up, would move up also and the muscle would contract. What's happening there is force is being applied through these insertion points where the muscle attaches to the bone. And as you can imagine, if you repeat this many, many times over, over a long period, it's going to have some effect on the bones. So to understand these effects, we're going to have a look at what bone is actually made of. So uh, it's important to remember that bones are actually a living tissue that are constantly building and rebuilding as time passes. Uh, so if you were to cut a bone in half, so this is here's basic diagram of a bone. If you slice that in half down the middle, say here, like that. So if you slice the bone in half, you'd be left with this diagram here. Uh, and there's a soft inner spongy bone called trabecular bone inside, and that's surrounded by harder cortical bone, as it's called. Uh, and they both serve a purpose. So the cells that are responsible for increasing density of the bones uh, are called osteoblasts, and these react with increased stress on the skeleton coupled with hormonal changes in the body uh, by producing more bone cells and growing more bone. This, thing, this means that when you exercise and you increase your muscular strength, the bones become stronger and less likely to break. Okay, so to backtrack a bit, in both men and women, up until about the age of 30, uh, people naturally produce more bone than they lose bone. Then by the age of 35, this gradually starts to reverse until bone loss becomes more advanced than bone production. Okay, so as we age, the holes in the spongy parts of the bone that we talked about earlier gradually become larger because less bone is being produced within the actual the outer shell of the bone. So this makes the bones become hollow and weak. And once they reach a certain point, they're classed as having the disease called osteoporosis, which is basically bone that is so weak and low in bone mineral density that it's high. It's a high risk of fracture, even with light impact. So, say, just falling over, you could break your hip bone if you have osteoporosis. Just to demonstrate that, if someone someone with osteoporosis would have much bigger holes within the trabecular bone that we talked about earlier. So instead of their bone looking like previously, it would look more like this if you cut it in half. 
there'd be much bigger holes in the bone and it'd be much less dense and a hollow texture to it and that's that's where you'd class someone as having osteoporosis or near osteoporosis uh, and this is what's really important to try and reverse or prevent using muscle strengthening activity. Women are four times more likely than men to develop osteoporosis and one reason for this is just simply because uh, they have less bone to begin with and they have lighter more delicate bones than men in general uh, so they have less of this uh, spongy bone in the first place to lose so when they do start to lose it it's more likely that they can develop osteoporosis. Uh, however another big factor is the role that oestrogen plays in bone production and the su obviously the sudden loss of this hormone or the reduction of this hormone during and following menopause. That's pretty grim news for women, it might sound quite grim news for women uh, that they've got that to look forward to but the good news is that a lot of research has shown that taking part in regular muscle strengthening activity can prepare you for when that happens and if you're adding more bone while you've got the chance uh, it can reduce your risk of developing osteoporosis. Of course there's other things that influence osteoporosis and genetics is one of the main things so it may be a case of you might get it no matter what and that's just unfortunate but there's still no, no excuse really not to take part in muscle strength and activity because every little helps. It's uh, less spongy in texture. <laughs> Which is harder? Yeah, harder. Okay. <laughs> That's the technical term. <laughs>